Our systematic review is titled Current Evidence on the Socket Shield Technique. For our study, socket shields were described as root fragments intentionally retained in close proximity to or in contact with dental implants in order to preserve or promote buccal, proximal or crestal alveolar bone. Our focus PICO question was to determine the long-term clinical prognosis and biologic plausibility of the socket shield technique using clinical, histological and radiological evaluation. Our secondary objectives were to provide a qualitative assessment of the available literature as well as the statistical distribution of the adverse effects and complications associated with this technique. An initial search strategy revealed that we did not have sufficient randomized control trials and prospective cohort studies for this systematic review. Therefore, we decided to include case control studies, case series, case reports and clinical abstracts. In our inclusion criteria, publications in which implants were placed in close proximity to or in contact with root fragments intentionally retained to preserve or promote buccal, proximal or crestal bone were included. Our exclusion criteria were root fragments not left back intentionally to preserve bone and implants unknowingly placed in proximity or contact with retained roots. Our search strategy using PRISMA guidelines is described in this figure. 498 articles were identified through database searching using keywords. Out of these, 17 duplicates and two articles which could not be translated into English were removed. Out of the 479 articles, 437 were excluded on the basis of title or abstract. Finally, full text analysis of 42 articles was performed. Out of these, 19 were excluded based on the exclusion criteria described earlier. Finally, only 23 articles were included in this systematic review and a descriptive analysis was performed. This figure describes the hierarchy of available evidence in this systematic review. One article was a case control study and 22 articles were case series and case reports. The studies were further divided on the basis of animal histologic and clinical assessment. Two studies which had both clinical and histologic components were included in both these groups. Among the histological studies, 19 dogs with 70 socket shields and 70 implants were assessed. 82.86% of the implants had complications or adverse effects. In the clinical studies, 144 patients with 136 socket shields and 136 implants were assessed. 24.26% of the implants had complications or adverse effects. Four animal histologic studies and one human case control study were further assessed using modified arrived guidelines for quality. Score range for this guideline was 0 to 28. The animal histologic studies had scores ranging from 15 to 20. The human case control study had a score of 4 over 28. This was significantly lower than 19.2 which was the mean score for this category. The distribution of complications and adverse effects in histologic studies is described in this figure and the table. 66 complications were recorded in total in all of the studies. 54.55% complications had mean crestal bone loss ranging from 3 to 6 mm at 4 months. 27.27% dealt with failure of osseointegration due to fibrous healing. 9.09% .09 of the complications showed PDL cement formation on the implant surfaces. 7.58% of the complications had either inflammation, mucositis or peri-implantitis. Finally, 1.52% of the complications were seen as implant exposure. Complications and adverse effects associated with the socket shield technique in the clinical studies is described in this figure and the table. A total of 33 implants had complications or undesired clinical outcomes. 78.78% of these complications were buccal or crestal bone loss around implants. 
15.15% had shield exposure, 3.03% had pocket formation, and 3.03% had a deficient ridge. After assessment of the available literature, it seems that the overall evidence in support of the socket shield technique is limited at the moment. Present histologic evidence indicates rapid bone loss, failure of osseointegration, formation of cementum, PDL, or PDL-like fibrous tissue on implant surfaces. At the moment, case reports with short-term follow-ups are insufficient to determine the long-term clinical prognosis of this technique. More studies, which are higher on the hierarchy of evidence, such as randomized control trials, and well-designed prospective cohorts would be required to fully establish the biologic plausibility and clinical success of this technique.